my influences uh, in my life are so far beyond what people could imagine. I mean, I grew up listening to Spike Jones and the Glenn Miller Orchestra and, uh, you know, I mean, so many different things, the Ink Spots and the Moon Glows and the, uh, the Temptations and Hank Ballard and the Midnighters and Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Fats Domino and Elvis Presley and, <coughs> and Hank Williams and Johnny Cash and Ernest Tubb and Bill Monroe and Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and Louis Bell Scotty and just there's goes from one extreme to the other, one end of the spectrum to the other. I take things very seriously. When Marty Robbins died, when Bill Monroe died, when Waylon died, I take a marker and write their names on my forehead and I wear black and that night I sing all their songs and pay tribute to them. I'm probably the only musician in the world that does something like that, pay tribute to other musicians like that, you know? But to me, those people accepted me for what I was and who I was, no matter what. And the greatest example of that is Bill Anderson. Nobody would have ever thought that Bill Anderson and David Allen Coe could have ever been friends or could have ever made a record together, you know? But Bill Anderson, I call him up back when I'm at the height of my career, and I said, Bill, when I was in prison, I used to hear a song you wrote called Get a Little Dirt on Your Hands. And I want to record that song, but I want you to come in and sing with me. And he said, sure, no problem. We did the record. We released it. It became a number one single. Bill calls me and says, hey, I'm uh, at the Grand Ole Opry tonight. I want you to come out and, and be my guest. So I go to the Grand Ole Opry. The guard stops me at the door. They won't let me in. And uh, so I'm trying to explain to him who I am. And he calls somebody and he says, there's some hippie here with long hair and uh, he says he's a friend of, uh, of, uh, of Bill Anderson's. And he says, I, you know, I don't know what to do. He says, I, can anybody get a hold of Bill? So, they get, so the main guy comes out and takes one look at me. He goes back and tells, when Bill tells him, oh yeah, you know, he's gonna, he says, Bill, we do not have time for you to, to have this guy as your guest. And, and Bill said to them, oh, well, that's fine. No problem. I, 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 won't, I won't play tonight. I'll be back next Saturday, and David will be my guest. So you got plenty of time to work that out. And the next Saturday, I go back, and I, Bill Anderson's guest on the Grand Ole Opry. I got four encores. And when I came off stage, all them people wanted to get their picture taken with me and invite me back to the Grand Ole Opry anytime. So I have a lot of love and respect for Bill Anderson. So I go from that spectrum to the Uncle Cracker Kid Rock Pantera, you know, Dead Kennedys, you know, Hank Williams III, you know, that's a, a great case in point. You know, Hank Williams III. Now, there's a boy. I just did some shows with him, and he does a half country show and a half a rock and roll show. And he tells you when he's through playing country music, ladies and gentlemen, they paid me to play here for one hour. Now, if you don't like what I'm going to play next, you need to get the fuck out of here because this is what I do. He takes his hair out of the braid, and I mean heavy metal all the way. I mean, you wouldn't even know it was the same guy, same band or anything. I mean, he's straight up heavy metal. You know, and, he, and he's good at it. Another great, a great songwriter and a great influence on me is Uncle Cracker, and I do want to talk about Uncle Cracker a little bit. Uncle Cracker is, uh, is uh, just a great guy. He uh, is one of the co-writers on almost all the songs on uh, Kid Rock's album, and he's got his own album out called Double Wide, and he had just had a hit single called Follow Me, which we're going to be doing for this album. Uh, Kimberly and I are going to sing that, I think, in the uh, in the live show from Billy Bob's. But uh, Cracker's a great songwriter. People uh, ask about the collaboration between Kid Rock and David Allen Coe, and they and they say, you know, why why do you like this guy? Why do you like Kid Rock? You know, and because I see in Kid Rock, I see a young 
David Allen Coe. I see a young version of me, you know, all the things that I was doing years ago, way ahead of their time. This boy does it. I mean, I, I used to ride my Harley Davidson on stage. I used to give people the finger. Uh, all the things that this kid does is stuff that I did back 25 years ago, you know. But I, it, it just wasn't acceptable then, you know. And, and the thing I like about this kid is that he does not take all that stuff that seriously, that rock and roll superstar bullshit. And he's not controllable, see. The last thing in the world that anybody that works for Kid Rock wanted to see was David Allen Coe on tour with Kid Rock. They did not want that to happen. They, they told him, this ain't going to happen. He said, no, you, this is going to happen. David Allen Coe is going to be on this tour. Now, if I got to cut two songs out of my show or three songs out of my show to give him room to be on that stage, that's what's going to happen. He's going to be on this show, gentlemen. So you, you figure it out. This is what we're going to do. Well, the first night, we go out, and unbeknown to me, after I just did my little 20-minute thing with the guitar before the show starts, and in the middle of a Kid Rock show, he just stops, and he says, you know what? He said, what do you people know about outlaw country music? He said, let me play you a great song, and he starts singing, you never even call me by my name, and he calls me out on the stage. And we sing it together, and when we get to the end, and I say to his audience, well, tell Kid Rock what happened, and they all scream, Mama got run over by a damned old train. And he looked at me, and he looked at the guys that worked for him, and he said, tell me this ain't working? He said, I know this is working. So we did those two tours together. And then I'm watching the Grammys the other night, well, everybody knows the motor dress for the Grammys is tuxedo, black tie, whatever. There's my partner with a T-shirt and Levi's on. Well, then they got these little cute cards with these little funny jokes on them. You know? He don't even look at the cute card. He said, I would like to take this opportunity to mention Waylon Jennings, a great musician that just died. And that's why David Allen Coe and Kid Rock are friends.